Welcome in. I'm Kanani Stevens with another Locked On Now Insider Report. We're joined by NFL insider Isaiah Stanback, and we got to talk Eagles and Cardinals. Zach Ertz on the move. The three-time Pro Bowler is heading to Arizona. Now, why did this trade come about at this point in the season for both these two teams, Isaiah? Yeah, that's the question that everybody wants to know. Um, but for the Arizona Cardinals, this makes a lot of sense. They lost their starting tight end last in last week's game um, with a knee injury for the season. So this is a position that they needed to obviously upgrade. Um, and when they looked around the, in the NFL, they found a guy in Zach Ertz who was available. So they pulled the trigger. Obviously, Zach Ertz, uh, he's spoken to the media since then. He knew about this trade before last night's game against the Tampa Bay Bucks. He said after the game, he was very emotional, crying in his locker. He was drafted by the Eagles. He wanted to remain there and do a long-term deal, but Philly was resistant to that. What's kind of their motivation? They didn't get a ton in return. They, I think they got a rookie defensive back and a fifth-round pick. So what are they trying to do right now? Is it just you know kind of rebuild at this point? Yeah, in the trade, just so everybody understands, they, they received the six-round draft pick from the Arizona, Tay Gowan, um, and as well as a fifth-round draft pick in 2022's draft. So, yeah, most people will look at that and say, huh, that's not much for, for a three-time Pro Bowler and an eight-year veteran to, and a former tight end, uh, Zach Ertz. Um, but this made a lot of sense for them. Um, over the last few years, he's been splitting time with Dallas Goddard, and the re re reality is that he's a Carson Wentz guy. Um, him and Carson Wentz had a relationship just mu much like Tony Romo and Jason Witten did. So anybody can remember how tight that unit was. That's the type of relationship that he had with Carson Wentz. So when Wentz left, guess what? The, the, the relationship was gone. So uh, Goddard has really become a guy that is really tied into Jalen Hurts. Um, and they started, they split time at about 56, 50, 56 percent of the snaps has went to Dallas Goddard um, versus, Zach, versus Zach Ertz. So it was kind of the writing was on the wall. And, you know, as you mentioned, this was something they had talked about doing in the offseason. Obviously, that didn't get done. Uh, now that they're two and four, they made that move. But he's not exact. Ertz isn't exactly going to, you know, a bad situation. The Cardinals are five and oh, their offense is explosive. What they can do there. Kyler Murray looks like he's trying to be, you know, MVP, put up all these crazy video <laughs> game points. What kind of role can Ertz play in that system? Because obviously it, he'll be taking on, you know, probably a decent amount of snaps for them. And then this is an offense that can do so many things. Yeah, he's going into an amazing situation. Obviously, he won't be available for this first this first game um, of his trade. Um, but Cliff Kingsbury um, is pretty much just eating his cake. <laughs> he's eating his cake right now. He has all the weapons that he could ever hope for. He obviously has Kyler Murray. He picked up James Conner this offseason. He has him in the backfield. He has A.J. Green, B-Hop, and now you throw a Pro Bowl tight end into that mix. And all of a sudden, these guys were already doing really well, but now they have to be considered one of the most explosive offenses, in not only in the NFC West, but also in the NFL. They're still undefeated at this point. Obviously, I think they might be slight underdogs, but they're going to play Cleveland this week. Is is Ertz a player? I mean, obviously, he's been in the same system for such a long time where he can come in and make an immediate impact because he's a veteran. and He can play, you know, kind of different roles. Yeah, that's the thing when you have a versatile quarterback like Kyler Murray. Um, there he's not just simply dropping back and having to deliver the ball uh, to his guys that have to run the exact routes correctly. They have to be in the right spots for these concepts. Um, he's going to be a guy that can run and obviously make himself open. Um, when Kyler Murray extends these plays, guess what? Zach Ertz can go ahead and find his way into these these gaps of these zone coverages because teams can't play these guys man anymore. Um, they now have a three-headed monster out there that have receiving abilities, and they have a, a quarterback who can obviously move the sticks with his feet as well this is a very dangerous team and Zach Ertz will have an immediate impact once he's allowed to play it's definitely going to be a good game this weekend as far as the Eagles go they dropped their game last night kind of you know what are Eagles fans kind of holding on to at this point is the team in tank mode or are they still trying to do something with you know this young squad yeah, this is a very difficult division right now. Um, obviously, these guys, everybody pretty much is looking up at the Dallas Cowboys and with those guys sitting at the top of the NFC East. And it's hard to imagine that anybody's going to really be able to dethrone them. So the question does arise, what are the Philadelphia Eagles doing? Um, from the fans' perspective, it looks as if they're tanking, but they still have a chance to go in there and hopefully get in and get a playoff spot if they can get things rolling, falling at the number two spot in the NFC East. That's about it. So we'll have to kind of see how that goes. That division is always kind of up in the air, it seems like, even with the Cowboys playing as well as they have been playing. So that's it for this Locked On Now Insider Report. He's Isaiah. I'm Kainani. Thanks for joining us.